All right, so if you didn't watch the debate last night, and we will get to the state of the state as well, but if you did not watch the Democratic debate last night, here is some of the lowlights. Uh, go ahead and cue up my audio for me. Yeah, two minutes, you know, I like to do these debates in two minutes sort of thing. You miss some of the, you, you see some of the stuff that maybe you missed. And then we'll go in and we'll actually start addressing some of the specific things that happened, not just during the debate, but in particular after the debate. Uh, Pete Buttigieg not getting a lot of love today for his behavior post-debate yesterday. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But this is what you might have missed at yesterday's Democratic debate. Why are you best prepared, the best prepared person on this stage to be commander in chief? And I not only voted against the wall, I helped lead the effort against that wall. I wasn't in the Senate for that vote, but I opposed that war from the very beginning. In my first campaign for Senate, I ran against a Republican who ran ads against me on it, but I stood my ground. The next president is going to be confronted with national security challenges different in scope and in kind from anything we've seen before. Not just conventional military challenges, not just stateless terrorism, but cybersecurity challenges, climate security challenges. You have to be able to form coalitions to be able to defeat them or contain them. If you don't, we end up being the world's policemen again. Almost a third of your supporters say your ability to lead the military is more of a weakness than a strength of yours. Why are you best prepared to be commander in chief? I believe the principal job of the commander in chief is to <clears throat> keep America safe. And I think that's about judgment. I think it starts with knowing our military. I sit on the Senate Armed Services Committee. I work with our generals, with our military leaders, with our intelligence. Uh, Donald Trump is taking us pell-mell toward another war. We have a very important resolution. We just found out today that four Republicans are joining Democrats to go to him and say, you must have an authorization of military force if you're going to go to war with Iran. But we should stop asking our military to solve problems that cannot be solved militarily. Absent preconditions, I would not meet with the, uh, quote, Supreme Leader who said, Joe Biden is a rabid dog. He should be beaten to death with a stick. I count that. Well, other than that, you like him. Other than that, I like him. And he, uh, he, <laughs> and he got a love letter from Trump right after that. All right. So that was just a little bit of what happened. It actually, USA Today put that one together. And it actually wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> considering some of the stuff that went on, to be perfectly honest with you, and some of the things that we, we saw, um, it was it was pretty pretty shameful to see that CNN is getting a lot of flack today for their treatment of Elizabeth Warren treating her more positively than Bernie Sanders. Now Bernie Sanders they don't they don't like him. Okay, and I'm talking about the media complex. I'm talking about the Democratic Party leadership. And for all of this talk, isn't it interesting over the past couple of days, in spite of the fact that Bernie Sanders didn't launch this attack, everybody's saying, oh, Bernie's getting mean and he's starting to, uh, to attack people. Well, he's defending himself. And if you don't remember what happened the last time he ran for president, the reason that Bernie Sanders lost is because he refused to use the best weapon available to him, and that was Hillary Clinton's complete disregard for national security and records law, and he refused to discuss her emails. He refused to hit her over that judgment call to go ahead and put these things on a private server to order her staff members to break federal records laws and transfer these documents to her in various creative fashions. Okay, Bernie Sanders refused to do that. He sealed his fate the first debate that he had with Hillary when he said, everybody's tired of hearing about your emails. That was the one weapon that he had against her, and he chose not to use it. He played the nice guy, and what did Hillary and the entire Democratic Party do behind the scenes? They organized protesters to start violence at Trump rallies, and they pretended that they were Bernie supporters. They trashed him. They gamed the system against Bernie Sanders last time around. And I'm sure that he's got advisors right now, in spite of the fact that he's he's got big time staffing issues that have crept up over the, the past couple of campaigns. And right now he's dealing with the Project Veritas fallout. 
But I'm sure he's got people that are advising him. You can't be the nice guy here anymore. You're going to lose again. You're going to have to go to war when people lie about you. And Elizabeth Warren, in my opinion, and I think that I have all of the evidence in the world for this, given her history, is lying that Bernie Sanders said that a woman cannot win uh, the presidency. He's going back to the 80s. We have we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Going back to the 80s, we've got footage of Bernie Sanders saying that a woman could be the president of the United States and should be the president of the United States. We've got multiple female candidates over multiple campaigns saying that he encouraged them, Tulsi Gabbard being one of them, to run. And the idea that somebody who has perpetually lied about her entire existence in Elizabeth Warren that you would believe her when she says that Bernie Sanders said that a woman couldn't be president, that doesn't make much sense. It kind of defies any and all logic that you have. And so help, help me out here, Joe. How many lies does she have? So she lied about being Native American. Uh, then she lied about the test results. Correct. Uh, saying that she was Native American. Uh, then she lied about what being fired for being pregnant. She lied about uh, her lie of being a Native American, not benefiting her career because it did. Um, she OK, so the pregnancy thing, she lied about being uh, sexually harassed slash assaulted at work. Remember that? Mm -hmm. um, then she what is it, what was the other thing? God, so many of them. Um, she lied about her kids going to private school and public school. She lied about, about that. that one. Um what else do we have? You, you get the point. Okay? You get the point. I can stop there. You understand my meaning here. She is a perpetual and compulsive liar. Okay? And what does she do when she's losing an argument? Oh, she lied about her parents eloping because of, uh, of her uh, mom's Native American heritage. That didn't happen. I mean, she's lied about so much. <laughs> so it's like. Do I believe the woman who keeps making things up and keeps getting caught making things up and then continues to dig in after she gets caught? Or do I believe the guy that I have taped going back to the mid-1980s saying that I think a woman could be president? Who do I believe there? It, it's clearly in Bernie's favor. Now, the reason I bring this up is because what happened is such an egregious farce and shows CNN, shows everybody who CNN really is. And now you've got journalists all over the country just ripping CNN for this. Now, there's no, I don't think there's any illusions that they are going to do what they can to hose Bernie out of this again. Okay. He may not win this thing, but he's doing real well in the polls right now. So they got to turn it up. All right. He faded for a little bit. Now he's starting to come back. And now they're starting to lie about the guy. And that's where this came from. So when I come back, because I'm on a commercial break here, when I come back, I'm going to play for you the moment that is causing a lot of controversy, even in American media, about how CNN's moderator treated Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren so very differently on that one question. And then we're going to play for you some interesting videos involving Pete Buttigieg running away from reporters after the debate. And then I'm going to remind you of an old story about Pete Buttigieg that, that I have told many, 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 many times in my dealings with him with interviews. And we'll talk about all of that coming up on News Talk 95.3, Michiana's news channel.